morning, church. Morning. How's everyone doing this morning? How's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Today is Mother's Day. Amen. How many of you are purposing in your heart this morning to be a blessing to your mommy? Nobody? No one wants to bless their mommy? Well, not only is it Mother's Day, but we're going to continue in the conclusion, the seventh part of, of the teaching on prayer walking. This is part seven. All right. How many have been here for all six parts, seven parts today? How many? Good. If you haven't watched all seven of these teachings, please do it because it's part of the vision that God has given you as part of this house. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you as we're here today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, you're the teacher. Holy Spirit, we thank you for inspiration and revelation upon your people. We thank you that the life is in the seed of the incorruptible seed, the word of God, that it's planted in our hearts, that it becomes engrafted upon our hearts and our minds this day, O oh Lord, that it becomes who we are. We thank you for the anointing upon your word, we thank you that your word is spirit and your word is life. Lord, and we thank you for the fruit that comes from that life in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So we have reconceptualized the original teaching. We are going back to the original plan that God has spoke to us before the COVID hit. And we are going to do what God has called you to do. How many of you are ready to do this? Now, first question that I have for you this morning is the last teaching I did. I gave you homework. How many of you did your homework? One, two, three. Holla well, you did half a homework. That's fine. I give you an A for effort. All right. The homework was, was to spend how much time? One hour and prayer walk your neighborhood to prayer walk your particular block. How many of you actually did it? Good, good. Did you get the opportunity to meet anybody? To say, what were you doing? What are you up to? Why do you keep stopping in front of all these businesses and talking to the window? You know, because people don't know what you're doing. All right? I want you to get so accustomed to doing this that it be just becomes second nature, that wherever you walk or even wherever you drive, even if you're on a bus, just begin to pray for that neighborhood. Pray for revival into those neighborhoods. Pray for each business to prosper un unless they're ungodly businesses, right? Whatever. You need, like I said, we need to hear from God. The Holy Spirit needs to give us the information based upon the things that we are seeing with our natural senses as well as with the, the inner voice and the inner leading of the Holy Spirit, okay? We had talked that prayer walking is intercession, it's standing in the gap for those that don't know they need it or for those that don't know how to fight for themselves on location with the information that the Holy Spirit gives you in cooperation with the move of God against opposition, no matter what the devil tries to do to stop you. And the biggest thing the devil does to stop any of us is make us too busy. I got too much work, I got too much responsibility, I have children, I have parents, I have this, I have this, I have this, I have that. Welcome to earth. Because each and every one of us have situations that will stop us from doing whatever it is that God has called us to do. And every act of worship before God always starts with the choice to worship God and put God first. That could be on your job. That could be with your children. That could be with your parents. That could be with your spouse. That could be with yourself. You know, we as humans are by fallen nature self-centered and self-exalting, self-gratification. It's all about me, 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 my, my, my. Right? No? Right? YouTube, right? You know, we used to sing that old Mexican song. I, 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 me, 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 my, my. And it was always about us. Everything was about us. But like I said a few moments ago, God has called us to be dead to self. 
God has called us to deny what we want and to benefit his kingdom, to love your enemies, to love the lost, to love the pre-saved, to love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, strength, ability, and everything that God has put within us, we praise the Lord. Right? But the word obedience has to be there too. And when God has called you to a place in your life, or he's called you to a place in ministry, obedience has to be the first thing that we do. God has called us to obey. Many throughout the word of God, God has called men and women to obey him in difficult times and difficult decisions. Do you think it was easy to Daniel not to bow to the idol? God told him don't do it when the whole society did it? No, but they stood strong, right? And guess what? Jesus was with them. But the three Hebrew boys were thrown in the furnace, right? And they came out. They didn't even smell like smoke. Eyebrows weren't singed. You understand? Can't touch them because God protected them. And we have to understand, God will call us to do things that are impossible in our own guesstimation estimations. Right? So he gets the glory. Say glory. glory. So this morning we're talking about his glory. Right? Because we do the prayer walking intercession on location with information and cooperation against opposition, all for his glorification, all for the glory of God, that the glory of God would be manifest in our land. It's great to have the glory of God in the sanctuary. It's great to have the glory of God on a worship service where his glory, his dunamis power, the signs, the wonders, the healings, and the miracles can manifest. It's great when that happens in the church. But guess what? The book of Acts, none of it happened in the church. It happened in the streets. Happened in the streets. You want to bring the glory of God outside the doors. You want to stop being an undercover believer. Well, you know, maybe they will know I'm saved. And when you get before the Lord, maybe the Lord will say, I'm not too sure you're saved. But Lord, Lord, we did this. The part I never knew you. Key word, knew you. No intimacy. You understand? Never birth any fruit. You never made any babies. I never knew you. You went to church. You read your Bible. But depart from me, for there was no intimate relationship between you and me. Right? Which means if we truly have an intimate relationship with God, the thing that makes it a relationship is obedience. It's hearing his word, hearing his voice, hearing his command, and doing what he said, not doing what we want. Amen? This is a hard sermon. Oh, yeah. I should have went to visit my mommy. It's all right. Listen, this is all good for you. All right? How many of you like eating broccoli rob? It's a little bit bitter, but I love it. And it's good for you. And half the church said, what's a broccoli rob? <laughs> if you're participating in the prayer journey for any other reason other than to glorify God, reevaluate your motives. Reevaluate. Re well, if I pray, walk, they're going to ordain me. No. It's for God's glory. It's for his credit. It's for people not to see you prayer walking or to see how super spiritual you are. It is for them to see Jesus. Amen? Your prayer from the beginning to the end must echo that of what David said in Psalm 108.5. This is the voice. He said, Oh God, that you would be lifted up above the heavens in the hearts of your people until... The whole earth knows your glory. Until the entire earth experiences your healing power. Until the entire earth knows what salvation tastes like. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Take a big old bite. No nibbling on Jesus. Big old bite. As much as you can get in your mouth. Experience the power of God and bring it out there. Because every seed reproduces life after its own kind. And if you are a wishy-washy, lukewarm Christian, the only thing you're going to produce is wishy-washy, lukewarm Christians.
What do you think about that, YouTube? Amen? If you have any doubts about your ability to glorify God through this prayer journey, listen to what God also told David in Psalm 46, verse 10. Passion translation. Psalm 46, 10. Surrender your anxiety. Some people are afraid. Some people, uh, 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 what are people going to think about me? Uh, I don't know what to do. I, I never went to Bible college. You know, we come up with all these reasons that get us all uptight about doing what God said to do. We should not have any fear about this, right? Surrender your, your anxiety. Be silent and stop your striving, and you will see that I am God, right? Your Bible might say, be still and know that I'm God. There's that word know again. Intimacy. Be silent, stop your striving, and you will see that I am God. I am the God above the nations, and I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. There's that whole earth again. Be still and know who I am. Your very response in faithful obedience to God's open door is an act that brings glory to God. You've heard me say it many times before. If you want the blessing of God upon your life, the only prerequisite is obedience. You cannot walk in disobedience and cry out for the blessings. It doesn't work. Some people have put their faith in the creator. Right? How many know God has created everything? He's the only creator. There's one creator. But people tend to put their trust and reliance in the things that he created instead of him. Right? How many of you like gravity? God created the law of gravity. Right? God has created natural law. God has also created spiritual law. Seed time and harvest is a spiritual law. There's a lot of Christians that put their faith in the law of sowing and reaping, but don't put their faith in God. So they worship the principle. They worship that thing created instead of the creator. So we truly have to come to the place of trusting God and what God has called you to do and what God has called us to do as a church, to go forth unafraid, unashamed, to bring the glory, the power, the signs, the wonders, the healings, the miracles out in the streets where people are dying every day. And the church is going, oh, that was a good message. Capish? The garbage is in the lobby. Amen? Amen? So not only will people be blessed by your presence, God will be exalted through your intercessions. Amen? So prepare yourself. As God's people in an earlier day prepared themselves to cross into the promised land, Joshua's words might as well be said to you today. In Joshua 3, verse 5 in the Amplified Bible. Right? Remember Joshua? Right? You know, God gave Joshua some great news in the very first opening verses of chapter 1. Moses is dead. It's on you, pal. Right? Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Right? Be very strong. Be very courageous. Be strong. Be courageous. Be very strong and very courageous. Right? Wherever you go, wherever you tread your feet, wherever you prayer walk, Wherever you go, you're possessing territory. You're taking land. The inhabitants of the people are becoming mine. You are going to rule and reign over your enemies. In our case, we don't want to defeat them. We want to defeat their God in them and bring them into the kingdom. Right? This walking took right place to Jericho and throughout their journey. But what did God say here through him? He said in verse 5 of chapter 3, and Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourself. That is, separate yourself for a special holy purpose. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify yourselves. Cut off those things that prevent you from being the hot air balloon that we heard about this morning. Amen. Cut away the sin. 
Make sure you have circumcision of heart. That flesh is no more part of you. Uh huh. Right? Because you will not prayer walk if you're chained to a pole. Right? You understand? If you have a bondage in your life, or you're self willed, or you're just going to do things your way, or you're Frank Sinatra Christian, you're going to do things your way. You know, when you get before the throne, you can't sing, I did it my way. Because then the Lord will say, well, I'm going to do it my way now. Depart from me, I never knew you. This is not a fear thing. You understand? I'm not trying to put fear in you. I'm trying to wake you up a little bit that religious tradition and the church being held back by fear and intimidation by the devil has to end. Because there is no revival if that's where your condition is. You need to be revived first. You need to sanctify yourself. You need to become the holy one. That God says you are. Right? I've been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Doesn't do nothing for my head. Doesn't do nothing for my emotions. Doesn't do nothing for how I feel today. I have to sanctify this. Just, this is justified. Work of the Spirit through God. By me allowing it. But this is a work of the Holy Spirit that I must work. To allow the Holy Spirit. To renew my mind. Right? So here, Joshua told the people, sanctify themselves, separate themselves, become holy. Right? And watch what the Lord will do to you. Watch what the Lord will do for you. Watch what the Lord will do through you. Amen? Amen. Fear not, God told Israel, and God tells us the same thing today. In Isaiah 41, verse 13, the voice translation. You there? Isaiah 41? says this, After all, it is I, the Eternal One, your God, who has hold of your right hand. Who has your right hand? Who whispers in your ear, Do not be afraid, I will help you. So as we go out, is anyone afraid of terrorists? Raise your hand if you're afraid of a terrorist. Got nothing to fear. If the Lord is with you, you got nothing to fear. He takes you by the hand and he leads you. The Holy Spirit leads us. He doesn't kick us. Right? We are led by the Spirit of God. And he leads us not just into divine truth, but he leads us to the people that need him now. He leads us to the people who he's been preparing those hearts that are ready to be plucked off that tree as living fruit. He will lead you to exactly who needs the healing and the miracle. And the whole time being in the comfort of saying in your ear, Don't be afraid. We got this. I've already ordained this. This is something I'm doing. You understand? So we're not going out there blind. We're not going out there deaf. We're not going out there dumb. We're not just wandering around with no idea what we're doing. We are listening to the Holy Spirit so His glory can be manifest and He will be exalted in our land. Amen? Amen? Amen. For such a time as this, because Jesus is coming back sooner and sooner and sooner, I am convinced of it more and more each and every day as we draw closer to what's taking place in our world. Amen? Hmm. Trust God to do the work, even when it seems like your prayers are futile. Right? But on the other hand, of a rebellious people, God says this in Isaiah 65. Turn to someone and say, we're not rebellious people. The message translation says this, Isaiah 65, verse 1. I've made myself available to those who haven't bothered to ask. I'm here, ready to be found by those who haven't bothered to look. I keep saying, I'm here, I'm right here, to a nation that has ignored me. He's still saying the same thing right now to the people of the world. Hey world, stop searching! I'm the one you need! Amen. And the church is silent. Amen. And the church is silent. Amen. The church isn't out there telling these precious people, but they're Muslims! Yes. Do you know Muslims believe in Jesus, so you're halfway there? 
It's not like they don't believe in Jesus. They believe he is a prophet. Right? They're halfway there. They just need the power of God to touch their lives to convince them, wow, you mean the moon god isn't the way to go? The dung god? Right? That's what Allah's name is, the moon god, which loosely translates Satan. Right? Because Jesus is the risen sun. He's the sun god. Right? So, not the sun god Ra, just to clarify things, you Egyptians out there. Right? Take your unks off. They're not crosses. All right? Just to let you know. See, I know a thing or two. All right? So, he's made himself available. But that availability is only through the church. That availability of what you have within you, you're the only one who can give it to them. Amen? Stand back and be amazed. God told Habakkuk in response to his cry in chapter 1, in verse 5, Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, if you prefer. I just call him Hab for short. Chapter 1, verse 5, Amplified Classic. It says, look around you, you Habakkuk, replied to the Lord, replied the Lord, I'm sorry, among the nations and see. Look around among the nations and see and be astonished. Be astounded. For I am putting into effect a work in your days such that you would not believe if you weren't told. Why don't you take that for yourself personal right now? You could go out and do the greater works than Jesus. Right, Lan? Lanny's excited back there. She's pacing. She's so excited she can't stay in her seat. Amen. Amen. You're going to see God do things you never imagined. Right? I shared a testimony a couple weeks ago, remember, from A.A. A. Allen? I'll share another testimony with you. You know Smith Wigglesworth, right? I shared the video yesterday. He was staying at another minister's house who had uh, prosthetic legs. He had legs and feet that weren't real. And God told him that God was going to give him a miracle. And he told him this. He just abruptly out of the blue in a conversation said, tomorrow go out and buy new shoes. So the guy was perplexed by this. And he went to his room to retire for the night. And the Holy Spirit said, whatever the servant of God says, you do. The servant of God says you do. Right? So the next morning he went to the shoe store and he said, I need, a, I need a pair of shoes. The guy said, what size? He went to measure his feet and he goes, oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you. And he says, no, you don't understand. I need a pair of shoes. I want a pair of black shoes size eight. So the guy went in the back and he got the shoes. He came and he took the shoe and he said, as soon as he went to put the shoe on one foot, instantly God recreated that man's leg. And he had a brand new leg and a brand new foot. Took the other shoe and put the shoe on, and the same thing happened. Go buy some shoes. You understand? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yet he said we would do greater works than he did. Smith Wigglesworth is no better than you. A.A. A. Allen is no better than you. The only differences between him, him, and us is they had greater discipline than you'd ever have right now. So you need to amp up your discipline and put God first. Benny Hinn, God has used him for many years in signs, wonders, healings, and miracles. But Benny had a rule. Once he would prepare for a Sunday teaching or on a crusade, he would not speak to any humans for an entire day before he ministered. He would not engage in any conversation. He would not talk to anyone but the living God. Because this is serious business, folks. Being a Christian is not fun and games. No party hats. There's a time for it. 
But if our priority isn't bringing change to our nation by b allowing us to be agents of revival, we're missing the point. We are absolutely missing the point. You still love me? Amen. You better love me. I love you. Always remember this. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are not going to be an ambassador one day. You already are an ambassador. You represent another nation called heaven. You live by the rules of that other nation called heaven. Your citizenship, the Bible tells us, is in heaven. That you are pilgrims here. You are sojourners. You are strangers in a strange land. And this land is very strange, people. You walk with the authority of the king of your nation. An ambassador represents the king or the president of his nation. And when he is in his embassy, he is literally still on his own land legally. Right? So if you go to a consulate or an embassy in New York City and you go into the French consulate, you are now on French land. You understand that, right? So wherever you go in the presence and the power of God is already your land as an ambassador. Talk about restored dominion, okay? God has already given you the land. Just like God told Joshua, I have already given you the land. I've already given you the inhabitants. I've, all you've got to do is just obey me and do it the way I told you to do it. You're an ambassador. Turn to someone and say, you're an ambassador. You are not a representative of the United States anymore. Your citizenship is no longer a U.S. citizen in the spiritual aspect of things. Thank God you're an American, right? Not going to take that from us, right? But we have to live according to a higher way of thinking. I'm an ambassador of heaven. My citizenship is in heaven. I am doing kingdom work in a foreign land. That's why God called us to do kingdom work in a foreign land. God didn't call you out of darkness into his marvelous light so you can meet for 45 minutes in a building on a Sunday. That's religion. And that stinketh. Amen? You are an ambassador, one who represents the king of his kingdom. In 2 Corinthians, it says this. Chapter 5 and verse 20. The Passion Translation. Are you ready? 2 Corinthians 5.20 We are ambassadors of the Anointed One who carry the message of Christ to the world. As though Christ, as well, I'm sorry, as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf. Turn back to God and be reconciled to him. You see, you are the voice of the kingdom. You are the voice of the king. You have the power of the king. You have the authority of the king. You have the rights of the king. You walk as a king. You have presence as a king. As long as you're walking righteously. As long as you're not undercover. You know. You didn't realize how powerful you were. Did you? And that's the problem with the church. The church doesn't know how powerful they are. The church believes situations and circumstances. They live according to how they feel. My body says I can't. My doctor says I can't. You represent the king of the universe. You represent the creator of health. You represent the creator of peace. You represent the creator of the miraculous. Amen. It's time to get them. It's time. Go get them. Go get them. They're waiting. Right? Fruit is dying on the vine. Serves no good 
once they fall to the ground and die. And a lot of them have died. And a lot of them will get before the king and they're going to say, nobody told me. I didn't know. And it could be your next door neighbor. You understand? We're not playing games here, people. We're not playing church. We want to see revival. We want to see our city changed. We want to see New York City be the city of righteousness like Tom had shared, I think it was last Friday night. We want to see the city of righteousness, not the city of unrighteousness. We want to see the streets cleaned up and not by a mayor. We want to see the streets cleaned up by the power of God. When the Water Street Revival hit this city in the late 1800s, bars went out of business. Nobody wanted to drink. People were delivered from alcohol. Bars closed down. Some bars became churches. Okay? He did it before, he could do it again. He did it before, he could do it again. If the people want it and the people let it, he will do it again. If people say, Lord, I'm too busy. You don't understand. I have an appointment to get my hair done. I mean, I mean, really, I mean, we do put some trivial things more important than God, more important than the mission of reproducing souls. Amen? Amen. May God be glorified against your opposition in the midst of your cooperation with your new information on your location through your intercessions. Can I get an amen, YouTube? Amen. So I'm going to give you some, I'm closing out this teaching today. I am going to do a review next week or two weeks or in three weeks, in the weeks coming, just to go through all chapters as a quick review, just like the one that's on YouTube now. But here's some prayer suggestions for intercessory prayer walking. Number one, by the way, there's 21 of them. Okay, and then we'll close this, this teaching out. Hallelujah. Number one, be spiritually prepared. Before you go prayer walking, you need to be in the right place spiritually. Amen? What does that mean? It means being in your word daily, having devotion, being a person of prayer. Now, if you're not in your word every day, guess what? Start today. Even on Mother's Day? Absolutely. Take time for devotion, which means more than just reading your Bible, it's taking time to study and to learn things about what you're reading and be a person of prayer because you cannot be religious and do this and expect fruit. You will reproduce more religious turkeys. Turn to your neighbor and go, go, go. I don't want to do turkey noise. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Right? When you're prayer walking, do not wear eight-inch stilettos, ladies. Wear comfortable shoes. All right? Because you're going to be walking. I, I can't walk no more. My feet's tight. You know? Yeah? Wear comfortable shoes and dress. You know, wear, wear comfortable clothing as well. Number three. Wear walking shoes that are already broken in. Don't go out and buy yourself a brand new pair of shoes and come home with blisters on your feet. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Not beaten up. Right? Number four, bring a lightweight backpack or a small bag that could be useful on long walks. If you choose, I'm going to walk for two hours. You know, maybe bring something, a snack, maybe some everyone needs prayer cards in your pouch or a fanny pack, God forbid. So 1990s. But whatever, you understand? Bring some materials that maybe bring some of the New Testaments with you. You know? John and Robert left here last week with, I think, a case and a half of these. Right? Praise God. Give these out on your prayer walks. Amen. Absolutely. You want to give them the most powerful thing, the Word. The Word is going to produce faith to overcome in them. Amen. While you're out there, number five, take pictures of places that the Holy Spirit impressed upon you to pray as a reminder to continue praying for those places. 
Also, you could take pictures of the miraculous things God's going to do. As a matter of fact, as an act of faith, make sure you do br have your phone with you. You're not going to bring a camera anymore, right? Does anyone own a camera anymore? No, we bring our phones. It's a, it's a computer that has a camera, right? Going out there, say, I got, I got fresh film in my phone, right? I'm ready to document the miracles. That's faith. I'm going out ready to document the miracles that the Lord's going to do today. I said this a couple of weeks ago. Teams of two or three work the best. Right? So if you're going to prayer walk my block, I'll agree to prayer walk your block together. Right? If you do that with three people, there's more people involved that's going to create more attention. This is not a covert operation. This is a prayer walk in your face operation. We want people to see what you're doing. Right? So no bashful Christians. We have a visitor. Lanny, look out the... <laughs> in my peripheral, a kitty cat just walked up to the door. <laughs> yeah. Ask that cat if it knows Jesus. <laughs> Meow. Meow. Right? So we want to create a sensation. We want to create a presence. Like I said, I'm going to have some vests or jackets printed up. Community prayer liaison. Where people are going to see this is an organized thing that's taking place in their neighborhood. You understand? This is not covert. This is not the sun has gone down. No one knows we're here. No, no, this is in your face. Thus saith the Lord your God. Amen. Repent and turn from your sin. And God will heal your family. Or whatever the Holy Spirit puts upon your heart. Is anyone excited about this? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Talk about taking pictures of the excitement. Hold on. Okay. All right. I documented people I need to pray for. Okay. <laughs> I got practice where I preach. <laughs> Amen. Number seven, pray together as a team prior to the beginning of your walk. Right? Pray for the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit, the boldness for us to, to, to bring the love of God to them. Right? Pray with your eyes open, sensitive, or what might prompt you around in your prayer. Like I said, God will use your natural senses. You know, the benefit of being out in the street is when you're walking, you will see things you never saw while driving or while on a bus or in an Uber, right? Hey, what's this alley? Look at all these hypodermic needles sitting in this alley. What is going on here? I need to take authority of the spirit of witchcraft and pharmacia right now. Huh? And you'll find a lot of that. What number was I up to? No, that was eight. Pray with your eyes open. Sensitive to what might prompt prayer. Number nine, reinforce prayer of other team members before changing the subject of prayer. Right? So some, you know, three people together. I want to, I, the Lord's telling me to do this. Well, the Lord's telling me to do this. What do we do? We fight. Get into strife and punch each other in the head. No. We pray about it and we'll say, okay, well, let's see how the Lord is going to work this one and then we'll do both. You know, but just reinforce, yeah, that is God, absolutely, right, God, but maybe we'll do that on the way back because it just makes more sense, whatever, you know, just reinforce and edify each other, don't, you know, don't think, well, I heard from God and you didn't. It is possible for three members on a team to hear three different things from God and not conflict each other. Uh-huh, especially when people have different ministerial gifts, you're going to hear three different ways. Your Roman gifts, your Roman 12 giftings cause you to hear God differently than other people with other giftings. Did you know that? And they all work together in that symphony harmony of prayer that we talked about. So it's about David. Number 10, stop for more intense prayer as the location calls for it, right? Places of sin and, and iniquity, false religions and cults, whatever, all right? 
Number 11, forget phrases such as lead, guide, and direct. Instead, just talk with God in a conversational matter. You know, we heard yesterday, one of the, uh, the minister that ministered yesterday at the men's meeting, he was saying that one church got to the point where the pastor would talk about something from the pulpit and bring direct instructions of what the church needed to do. And people in the church will say, well, I pray about it. If I feel led, I'll do it. And so he went to the metal shop and he bought a big bar of lead and he passed it around the entire congregation and had them all touch the lead. And he says, good, now we all felt lead. Now let's do what God has told you to do. You know? Sometimes we use super spirituality as an excuse to do nothing. Well, you know, the Holy Spirit isn't convicting me to do it. He hasn't given me specific directions. <clears throat> if I may be so bold to say this, if it's coming out of my mouth or it's coming out of Pastor Teresa's mouth or it's coming out of any of the elders' mouths, that is God giving you direct direction. It is not open to interpretation. It is not to be deflected, that's for the person across the aisle. It is for you. Amen? Amen. When you pray, use scriptures in your prayer. Speak the word, pray the word, declare the word, decree the word. Don't speak opinions. Just speak God's word. Why? He watches over his word to perform it. The angels hearken to the word and the voice of God spoken. The word of God is where the power is. That's where the grace is. That's where the truth is. That's where the faith is. That's where the love is. The word. Amen? Amen. Don't be afraid of silence. Occasionally there will be moments where God may just cause you to silently pray in front of a place. Most of your prayer will not be silent. And the reason to be silent is not because of fear. More out of reverence, it would be. Okay? Number 14. While you're prayer walking, please smile. And please be pleasant to the people you meet. Don't have a nasty attitude. Don't huff and puff and groan. You're interrupting my prayer walk. You're there for them. God may already be working in their lives. Pray for them. Number 15, it's okay if prayer walking feels awkward the first couple times you do it. Right? Because it's something that you've never done before. Right? It will soon feel more comfortable as it becomes a way of life. Number 16, Praise is a type of prayer. Singing at times, as God calls for it, is totally welcomed. You can get in front of a place and God prompts your heart with a song that has something to do with what God wants that place to be and wants you to release it through the prayer of song or praise. I'm not saying we need to hire a choir and bring a sound system with us. It's not what I'm saying. Right? But be willing for the spontaneity of the Lord. The Holy Spirit may prompt you with a song, a, a song of the Lord, which is a prophetic song that you've never sang before over a place. God sings songs of deliverance over us. Why can't you sing a song of deliverance over your neighborhood? Well, I don't have a good singing voice. I keep hearing the elevator show up. Keep hearing ding. Fifth floor, lingerie. I mean, ding. Every time I make a point, I hear a ding. The angel got his wings. I don't know. Too many movies. Right? Okay, we ready? Number 17. When praying becomes difficult, pray in the Holy Spirit. Also admit it to your team and ask them to pray with and for you at that moment. Number 18, be flexible as the Holy Spirit leads. The Holy Spirit is not rigid. He's flexible. Right? Number 19, conclude your prayer walk on time, especially if your sharing time is planned with others. 
All right, so, so we're going to pray a walk for one hour. Right? Oh, the Lord's telling me we need to go six more hours. No, 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 okay? Number 20, pray together as a team at the end of the prayer walk. And number 21, it is good to keep a journal of what took place while walking. Amen? Amen. So let me ask you a question now. That's, that's the end of this teaching. Like I said, I'm going to do a review in a couple of weeks. How many of you are inspired to do this? Say, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Is there anyone that's hesitant about doing this? No. David just spoke for the whole church. Amen? This is something that we could all do. If you have issues with walking, health-wise, right? Like I said, there, there are other aspects of this where we need intercessors to be praying at home while the other teams are going out, which means we need to schedule specific times that prayer walking will take place. That way the intercessors know what time to be praying, all right? We will talk about that at a meeting, at a training, that we can go do this. All right? Did you all learn something this morning? Did you learn something by this teaching? Turn to your neighbor and say, I am an ambassador. I am not a chicken hearted. I am an eagle. I am not a beagle. I am a new creation. I am not who I used to be. I'm alive in Christ. I'm dead to my old ways. I'm dead to my old defects. I am dead to my old fears. I am dead to my old intimidations. I am dead to my old limitations. I am a mighty man or a woman of God. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. See you next week. Amen. Come on.